Hey everyone, it's one o'clock on a Monday afternoon. I haven't seen you guys in so long. Give me one second because I'm going to tag my friend Jonathan here because I'm going to bring him onto the video with me. So hold on, hold on. There we go. Okay, good. Let's X out of here now. Good. Jonathan's on with me. All right. This is my first video where I bring someone else on with me, so I want to confirm that he's on. Jonathan, I hear... Oh, my God! Hello. Aloha. Um, my first side-by-side. -side. Um, I think I'm having a good hair day. Hold on. Let me put the camera on so I can make sure we yeah, can Yeah, make sure we can <laughs> get all that hair. <laughs> Jacob is on with us. This is my homeboy, Jacob, who used to uh, handle me, help me build my money. So, um, Jonathan, welcome to the show, to the Facebook Live show. I'm so glad to have you. Yeah, thank you for having me. Let's give it a real, like, authentic title. Let's talk about uh, the Life and Brilliance Facebook Live show. Um, so, let me talk, um, let me give my folks a... Uh, let me just tell you all about my homeboy, Jonathan. Uh, so you all know that I study with Dr. John Martini, and Jonathan started, studies with him as well. And in two years ago, I was in Texas for a week-long training, uh, facilitators training. And somebody came up to me like early on in the week, and they said to me, you see that guy over there? His name is Jonathan. And he is like, it, he is a man. And I was like, oh, really? And I turned, and Jonathan was just like, you know, just just has this like cool, calm presence about him that like when you see him, he just always just kind of looks like just chill, right? And so it's like cool. And so, uh, you know, the nature of the training is that we get to work with each other and get to know each other. And I got to work with Jonathan. And since then, uh, he has been one of my favorite people because he is just the coolest dude. And so I love that we get to do this together, Jonathan. Warms my heart to, uh, to hear that from you. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to be to join you live today. Yay! And so uh, outside of being the coolest dude, let me tell you that Jonathan is a mindset and body science expert who helps high-performing CEOs and business relationships with axiology, quantum physics, and the mind, he created the mind-body factor. And so, uh, Jonathan, I'd love if you shared with, with the audience a little bit more about like your perspective of who you are and what you do in your work. Well, I am um, originally a body worker. Uh, done shiatsu with my family for uh, since 2001 and so healing and body work has been a big part of my life and then um, uh, about 10 years ago got into personal development so I started exploring and uh, harnessing and tapping into the power of the mind and mindset mm. and um, I started uh, my personal development with another company called PSI seminars and then uh, through PSI I um, uh, encountered Dr. John Martini's work and uh, what really hooked me in was about values. I did his uh, values mm. determination exercise. And at the time I was, uh, you know, beating myself up and not appreciating me and appreciating my values. But when I did the exercise and saw that I was on track and actually living according to my values, I had a huge aha. Because, uh, you know, values is such a big key component, a foundational component about human behavior yeah. and the mind-body factor, mind-body connection. Um, because if we're living by our values, if we're living in alignment with our values, um, our symptoms are more mild. If we're living out of alignment, yeah. if we're having all these emotional highs and lows, you know, we have the emotions and we are we're also going to have all kinds of uh, body symptoms, which I call the mm -hmm. mind body factor. So uh, that kind of sums up my journey in a, in a nutshell without going into too much detail, long story short. Yeah, I love it. And one of the things that we were mentioning in, mentioning in our pre-show kind of combo is um, my past as an athlete. And so as an athlete, I appreciate very much the connection between um, uh, kind of your view and your purpose around helping us connect the mind and the body, because, you know, I've learned, you know, through, through my work as an athlete and as a coach is that how much our bodies speak to us um, when we're out of alignment. Yeah. Through our, our, you know, our, uh, our wellness, uh, is this is the combination of our health symptoms and our disease symptoms. And so mm. it's the positive and the negative. And so they're constantly giving us that support and challenge, that yin and yang, that positive and negative balance to help us find our way. So making sure we're getting enough rest, drinking enough water, getting, you know, eating the right foods, um, making sure we're pushing ourselves enough, but not too far, mm -hmm. you know? And mm -hmm. so uh, all those symptoms are, um, they're values driven. 
And so, you know, if you know what your values are and living by them, uh, your symptoms are going to be milder. Um, if you're not living by your values and got all this uh, highs and lows, uh, the symptoms are going to be much more intense. Yeah. You know what? Can you talk, can you expand a little bit about that, the highs and lows and your symptoms being more intense? Because I think that could be helpful for some of the folks who are on with us. Well, um, for example, um, let's actually, I, I went through some stuff uh, uh, these past few weeks. Um, mm -hmm. I started um, sharing my first uh, digital product, my first lead magnet, lead generator called the uh, Mind Body Factor Map right here. And, oh, I um, love this map. <laughs> and uh, for those of you who tune in, you, we'll give you a link. You can download this. But I started mm -hmm. sharing this online through Facebook Live. And so um, the podcast went really well. A lot of people attended. A lot of people uh, you know, signed up to my mailing list to download the map. And I was feeling good about it. But then um, halfway through, I did five broadcasts. So right after the first two, like I started feeling like anxious and um, just stressed and ten there was all this tension in my neck and ah oh, i was just not feeling great and um mm. and what happened was I, I i was starting to overeat and then i was starting to drink more wine <laughs> i normally just have one <laughs> or two glasses of wine but then mm -hmm. i made it to a full bottle two nights in a row and i was like uh oh something's going on and i had dealt with um binging uh behavior before in the past mm -hmm. and so fortunately um in the demartini work we have um protocols that can address that. And so um, I turned to one of my uh, colleagues, Curtis Harrier, awesome facilitator. Shout out to Curtis. Shout out to Curtis, yeah. We're in the, all in the same mastermind. Um, mm -hmm. I asked him for help, say, hey, uh, this is what's happening. I'd like to look, figure out what, what in my, you know, what's out of alignment? What, what in my mind body is going on? And so um, we did, we started doing our work on it. We started peeling the onions with the uh, Martini method. And we found that actually, um, I was, uh, because I was putting myself out there, because I was um, positively putting, building myself up, sharing knowledge that I loved and performing, I was creating all this positive energy upward and outward, mm -hmm. um, there's pairs of opposites. And so at the same time, I was to create, you know, there was all this negative downward gravitational energy, which is shame. Mm -hmm. I was dredging up all the shame that I hadn't done my work on all this baggage. I mean, I had to go back. There was stuff in college. There was stuff in um, uh, elementary school. There was stuff all the way going back to preschool. I had to go look at again and do the work on it. And um, for every, uh, you know, for every shame, there's hidden pride. And for every pride, there's hidden shame. And actually to be grounded and to be centered, we actually need to integrate both. So yeah. in our work, we were just looking at the pairs of opposites externally, but most importantly, internally, the, the personas, the pride and the shame personas and putting the two together and integrating that. And um, that really made a big difference in my neck. I could really feel the difference because, um, so neck pain, according to the mind body factor, uh, most commonly is about making decisions, but also about expression because of their throat. And so what was I doing? I was expressing myself. Mm -hmm. So I had to look at, I had to look at episodes in the past where I felt ashamed for expressing myself verbally. And literally there was one episode where I, I took some sand and I threw it up in the air, <laughs> but I did it next to a classroom <laughs> window. So the, the sand went in the classroom. The teacher got upset. I ran off, made myself small and high, and I was able to get away with it, but I felt ashamed for just doing that for years. And I visited that episode many times. So I had to go look at it again from this new yeah. angle. But putting the two together, just I broke down in tears, but I could see the wisdom in it. And then I felt my neck just release. And I could, I just had so much more range looking left and right, which was mind boggling. So that was kind of you what know, I've been working on. A, a little bit of a side note on that. I'm really glad you brought that up because I was just on the phone with a friend right before, or a little bit before our, our session now. And we were talking about how, um, we we're talking about how, Moments like this show up when we are doing something new, when we're stepping into something new, something bigger. And so I just want to take a second for everyone who's watching that sometimes when we step into something new, we have this expectation or fantasy that everything's going to be like perfect and pictures of butterflies, right? And the reality is, is that, you know, when, when we do that, it's going to feel good. And it's also like stuff like this is going to happen. And so if we release the fantasy that things will be perfect, 
right? Or like the perfect kind of image or vision that we have in our mind. And it will, we will experience both sides, right? Then if we come in with that expectation, then our experience is different. Yeah. So a little bit of, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. There's always two sides to everything. So to prep for it, you know, it's also anticipating, you know, what are the potential, potential downsides, drawbacks. And then after um, you, you know, a lot of people, you know, like either personal development events or any high performers, they do a performance, whether it's a presentation mm -hmm. or speech, they'll tend to feel like this crash afterwards. Well, it turns yeah. out that the crash is, is um, some of it is going to be any, any shame that you may not have uh, appreciated yet. You may not have done your whatever modality you work on. And actually, I got this, um, I got the insight from watching uh, Brene Brown, um, mm -hmm. who did her Netflix special that just came out, Divine Timing. And she, yeah, talked, it yet. she talked about her, um, after her first TED Talk back in 2010, and she I was talking that. about shame, and she was talking about uh, how she was so authentic, she felt like she had an authenticity hangover for the next three days after. Mm. Big one. Yeah, and I realized, oh my God, I, I had my own authenticity hangover after I put myself out on Facebook. And then I felt that kind of crash afterwards and yeah. a lot of it dredged up a lot of shame that I hadn't worked on yet. And so that was huge and big for high performers because, you know, as high performers, we, you know, we want to make a difference in the world and we're right. going to put ourselves out there to get seen, mm -hmm. heard and paid for that. And, um, and so in order to, for us to grow upwards and outwards, which if we use the, um, the tree, you know, the tree, uh, a plant or a tree, it's, it's growing upwards towards the light, which is phototropism. Mm -hmm. In order to keep growing upwards, the tree must also grow its roots downwards, which is gravitropism. We must make sure oh, we need to grow downwards and we need to actually harness the gravity. So shame and gravity are actually one and the same. And that's how we can stay grounded and be grounded. We actually have to uh, look at those past pains those past voids that we create you know when our, our values were challenged those voids it's untapped potential it's untapped fuel and when we tap into it it's actually very powerful energy that helps us continue to grow upwards but it's it's a process you know it's as we grow upwards yeah. we must simultaneously look downwards and turn inwards and put the two pairs of opposites together um that's 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 nest that's what i'm discovering in, in my own life and um also with you know a few clients that they're also high performers and uh, putting themselves out there. You know, a lot of stuff comes up uh, in the process. So the, the inner work is just as necessary as the outer work. And you must do both if you want to, you know, have an, a life of abundance, a life that's sustainable and a life that, you know, has, a, has an impact for yourself and for others. Yeah, that tree, um, that tree and that, that the piece on the tree was deep. I could feel it kind of rise in my body as you were talking and so I can feel the the just kind of the gratitude around like seeing that you know I also have a little bit of a um um what's the word uh um avenue here that others don't because I got to see uh, the image of the tree that you shared with us yeah um but to hear you talk about and, and I appreciate you letting me take this kind of little left turn here because I think that it's really important for people to understand that that for us to keep moving forward and I have I, tons of high, high performers who are on the video already who I, yeah, I can see them on the video that if we just have the expectation that it's going to feel pretty moving forward then it's going to be in a constant state of disappointment and frustration and and grief and not knowing what to do with ourselves right but if we allow the cycle to be um, it's a whole different experience. Yeah, and the, and the beauty of it when it comes up, um, if you're work, you know, you have a, you have a modality. So like you know, between you and I, we use the Demartini method, which is a powerful mm -hmm. modality. Right. But there's others out there. Um, if you use the modalities, you you know, it is necessary to do some inner work. So you know, whether you're yeah. working with a facilitator, a coach, or a therapist, doing the inner right. work is is just as necessary. Like Brene Brown, she said, you know, she she needed therapy, and she's yeah. been doing her therapy, and that's actually help, helped her continue to grow. So. Um, so, you know, for those of us, are, you know, are on the video um, or on live and on the replay, you know, definitely, um, you know, get get some help. Um, it's 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 part it's actually necessary and for us to keep growing, you know, turn to someone yeah. that, you know, knows how to uh, how to handle it. And um, but the, the results that you get are, are amazing. Like um, yesterday I was in a um, uh, in a uh, scavenger hunt. Uh, it was a fundraiser for oh, a, that's local, right. yeah, a local nonprofit. Mm -hmm. uh, my uh, my partner, Michelle Horikawa 
Uh, Hi, she, Michelle. she headed up the, uh, um, the committee on it. And, um, and actually the night before, um, I went to, uh, monster trucks at Aloha stadium. <laughs> I had a <laughs> lot of fun, <laughs> let loose. So there was a lot of high, a lot of elation. And I had a lot of beer and some tequila. <laughs> I, I'm so, happy because there was a picture of that. Yeah, yeah, you saw it with the mullet, yeah. yeah and I saw it um, with the mullet, huh? <laughs> so the next morning, I was hungover. I was feeling some shame. So you know, I got a, I got an appointment with uh, Dana Fontenot, our other colleague and friend. Uh, shout out to Dana. Um, <laughs> but I was feeling really low afterwards. Um, but because I've been doing um, all the shame clearing work, um, mm -hmm. I managed to to you know, keep pushing through, even though, you know, so I got to walk off my hangover in Waikiki for three hours looking, you know, doing the scavenger hunt with my, my team. And guess what? We won. We won. It's the push on the pull of it. It's I know. We won. We won a thousand dollars. So, you know, I got my okay. cut of two. Yeah. Nice. I, I got my 250. So the thing is, you know, shame, if, if we, we're, we have shame, it blocks our uh, worthiness and receiving of wealth. Yeah. It blocks opportunities. Yeah. It holds us back. We don't think, you know, we mm -hmm. won't put ourselves out there or, you know, when we ask for, you know, the, um, you know, ask to be, you know, for what we're worth, we either hold ourselves back or we, you know, we have so much energy, some, sh you know, the shame energy around it. It just, it doesn't get heard and received the way we would love to. So I think, you know, I really do think the, the, the work I've been doing in the past couple of weeks um, really helped. That was a, that was a neat result that, um, mm -hmm. You know, saying that, okay, yeah, you've, you know, you've done your work. I'm going to be doing some more because, um, you know, I, business has been impacted this year because of the stuff I haven't worked on yet. I'm working on it at the moment. Yeah. And I'm, I'm starting to see and feel the turn, the shift occurring. So that's why, you know, I'm, I'm really um, inspired to share, you know, this discovery because it, it's, um, it does affect everybody in some way, Absolutely. shape, or form. Yeah. And, yeah. It can, and it can show up, it can show up as any of these um, body symptoms, whether it's in the neck, the lower back knees um the feet headaches um there is going to be a, some kind of component of that driving it so let's go back and so carrie's asking us what are we doing so hi carrie so just to let carrie and everybody else know who just uh jumped in we're talking to uh my friend and colleague jonathan sugai and we're talking about the mind body factor and how our mind and our body is connected and how our bodies talk to us uh, when something's working or not for us. And so let's go back to the net. Let's talk about, hold on, let me look at my net, my notes right here. Um, let's talk about how does brain science play a role in pain, which has kind of been our conversation, but anything deeper that you want to take us through? Yeah. Um, so our, um, our nervous system, our brain, and all the nerves that run throughout our body, um, that's basically like our, um, our computer hardware. It's, uh, or wetware since we're you know mostly water yeah and it's an electrical system mm, mm -hmm. and so um when we're um, experiencing the world we're perceiving and receiving uh information from the outside through our sensory system and we're processing it internally and then we motor it out through you know movement and language okay. so it's all but because it's electrical energy, this is, you know, energy is coming in and out and there's information associated with it. It's all basically energy and energy um, underlies with energy is vibration and it underlies language and movement. So in my, um, my body work in Shiatsu, it's acupressure. Um, as an athlete, yeah. Have you had massages before? Oh yeah. And I actually was just thinking about how, um, Maybe about two weeks ago, I woke up and my neck was completely stiff, just kind of running down like the middle of my back. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about, oh, I've got a lot going on. How much of that is connected to that yeah. stiff neck the, morning? Yeah, that was all your pains in the neck or too many, uh -huh. too many decisions. Yeah, you, had a, you said you had a lot going on. So all that energy oh, builds yeah. up. And there's a lot of nerves here. So all that stress energy, that emotional energy is just... It's just sitting in the nervous system because it's, it's, it's in a polarized state. Mm -hmm. So in body work, we, you know, we apply pressure, which actually helps you to feel it. And then um, what I'm doing now, before I used to just press on it, and that would help. But I found that um, now I, I press on it and I have my clients move their bodies, hmm. different parts of their body. And what we're doing is we're tapping into that energy and then expressing it as movement. And oh, so wow. that's, really that's actually a more efficient way of releasing the energy. 
Mm -hmm. And then um, to even add an extra oomph, we do the mind-body factor, which is just being present with the pain and knowing that it has something to do with about either making decisions or there's too many decisions. You start thinking about, okay, what, what's happening right now you know, that's associated with that? Because there's information in this energy. And so the thing is, you make that mind-body connection, you connect with what it's about, then that also helps with the healing process. You're... Your physical modalities work better if you're conscious about what this this represents because it um the more you're unconscious of it the more there's a mind body split uh the more that the brain and the body are disconnected um the more intense the pain has to be which is your body actually trying to wake you up to say hey listen to me listen to me if you don't listen the volume just goes up the intensity goes up but once the message is heard it calms down dramatically it's actually really cool when um when I uh, when I ask questions and people go when they get it when they make the connection yeah. their eyes open up wide they have that aha moment yep and then and then okay, and then I ask them okay how does the symptom feel they go wow it, it, it actually it's feeling a little better or a lot better mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so I remember I, I had that same experience when we were in um, at Peter's place in Denver oh yeah last year yeah and, I remember we did some yep. work yeah you yeah, want to share you know, about the, what, what was it do you remember what, what we worked on um. I don't remember the topic, but I remember that it was an intense time for me. And so to give a little bit of context, we were at, um, Jonathan and I are in the same sales coaching mastermind with our coach, Perry Sean, who, um, shout out to Perry. Ooh, ooh. Um, and so it, we were out there for like four or five days and it was, um, it, it was a pretty intense time. There was a lot going on. I was going through a lot of growth and I don't remember the exact, uh, content topic of what we were talking about, but I remember going through the massage and you would pinpoint a spot and then you'd ask me the question and the question was like so on point and then immediately you know the answer just kept coming to me and so of course you know people who know me know that i cry for everything and so like by the time we're you know done there's like tears i'm full on in tears but i but i remember just feeling the shift in my body immediately when i connected to that um and it was just i can feel just by the end my body just said <sighs> Yeah, yeah, you were you were doing a fantastic was... job connecting the dots, and then they, then that allowed your body and your mind to release the emotions. Yeah, and yeah, then, yeah. You felt you were know, feeling the shift. And, and as you were talking, uh, what I wondered about is is how much of this is self trust because how much uh, for for folks listening is is like the opportunity to get in tune to what, what our body's telling us. And how, how many messages have our bodies been telling us? But one, either we don't listen, right? Or we're kind of in tune that there's something going on, but we're not fully trusting the messages that we're getting. Well, um, so any thoughts on that? Well, the, the joke I, I make often with my clients, body work and mind work, uh, is that uh, we, were, we were not shipped with a manual. <laughs> there, there, was no, um, there was no mind body connection for dummies. Um, mm -hmm. You know, most people just stop at pain. I'm, I'm in pain. That's it. They don't go past that. But um, uh, people who meditate, people who are in uh, some kind of uh, body, mind and body type modality like yoga and then body workers, chiropractors, healing, people in the healing arts, they started, you know, if you get really present you, and you start to just pay attention to what comes up in your mind, you start to really f allow yourself to feel into pain. You get some interesting messages. And the real aha is, is when you really lock in and become aware of what the core message is behind that pain. Yeah. And yeah. you can, and the confirmation of that is you actually feel a shift like you did. Yeah. You felt yep. that shift. You felt that physically. release. Yeah. Physically and emotionally. Yeah. If you're really on track, you get both a physical and emotional response. Mm -hmm. um, and there's, um, so uh, it, it requires practice. And so, um, what I'm attempting to do with the mind body factor map is to at least get people to start thinking and start to become more, a little bit more aware. It's a, it's, it's, it's a first step. And, um, and then down the road, I'll, I'll be, uh, you know, bringing out some more things to help people with that integration aspect. Cause it's just, um, the more we can, um, be aware of that connection, uh, the more we actually can appreciate our body because our body is like our vehicle. You know, I like to call it the, yeah. the BMW. It's the body, the mindset and then putting the two together that you get the wisdom uh, of the symptoms so our bmw and you know that's, one of, that's my favorite car um <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I would imagine it might be the favorite car of some people watching also. So yeah, high performers. You know, I BMW is a high performance brand. Yeah. yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So you know, it's it's fun fun putting it together. Um, and so I'm, I'm what I'm attempting to do is just you know get get that information out there, help people connect, reconnect with their body and mind, because our bodies, our body is our vehicle. It's really trying to help us accomplish our our purpose and our mission. It's 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 here, you know, in this uh, human experience, and so. Um, the more we can un understand, appreciate the messages of the body the, through the symptoms, um, it, it's there to help us. And so yeah. I'm here to help people understand that. So that's my mission, my purpose uh, in order to do that. So. I love it. Uh, any final, we're, we're going to give folks the mind body factor map. Um, any final words about, about mindset? I just want to make sure we didn't miss anything around mindset or applying the mind body factor to prevent, um, to prevent any injuries or pains. Yeah, um, on the mindset side, my recommendation would be to do the um, the Demartini values determination process. Mm -hmm. So, um, so you can do that online at Dr. Demartini's site for free. Um, if you want a one-on-one, -on -one, uh, Liz uh, knows how to do it. Um, I know how to do it. In mm -hmm. fact, actually, we're going to be uh, in Los Angeles next month to get uh, refreshed on our training. We are. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that, you know, determining your values is actually one of the key components, knowing what your values are and living by them. And then you can use the mind-body factor map. Your, your symptoms are letting you know where you're in alignment and when you're out of alignment. Or as Marie Kondo said, you know, what brings you joy and what doesn't. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, using, using your body as feedback, using your, your um, perception and awareness as feedback. Um, so if you're, if you're living, according, living in alignment, your symptoms are definitely going to be mild. So that's... that's the most basic thing, but it, it does a lot if you start really start paying attention. There's other things, there's other more advanced things, but uh, for those of us, uh, you know, who are new to this or want to just start to play around with it, doing your values um, and then uh, uh, go download the map. Um, you can get it at my website, uh, sugai.solutions slash map. We'll put a link in the uh, comments below. Yep, we will. Yeah. On that note, my friend... I think that's the perfect way to close our conversation i want to say first of all i'm grateful for your friendship so thank you for being you and for being in my life i'm really grateful for that and i love that we were able to come together your first video in maybe a few weeks my f first video in a lot of lot of weeks um but thank you for coming on thank you liz i really appreciate uh your friendship uh the journey we've been on together and yeah. uh, the work that you do is so inspiring and to see uh, the progress you. you've made uh, just in these past uh, few months uh, in the mastermind, uh, it's, it's really cool. Yeah. And so thank you for the opportunity to be uh, of service to uh, your followers and to be able to share uh, the opportunity to share my love and wisdom. Awesome. Thank you. And everybody who joined us on the video live or and also those of you who are going to join us on the um, re, re, how do you say this? Replay. Replay. Yeah. Glad you joined us, and we will do this again very soon. Yes, Talk to you thank later. you. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh, hold on, hold on. How do I do this?